Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. In this new series, you will learn how to create a map-based 3D maze game on Scratch. Here's a quick preview. So before I proceed, I do have to remind you here to download all the um, assets which I'll be using in the game. And um, also if you're having any problems with regard to your code, you can always check out the link in the description. And within my downloadable files, I've also added a part by part scratch file, which means that if you're stuck in part one, then you can just download the file for part one and then proceed to part two. Anyway, so I'm going to start this off by deleting the cat sprite and now I'm going to upload um, sprites starting with just the player. And you can find this within, you know, like I said, the, uh, the downloadable files in the Google Drive attachment. And our player is just a tiny little dot. In case you can't see it, I'm just going to make him way bigger and you should be able to see him now. And basically this player is going to be a virtual 2D representation of our 3D player. Now, when it comes to a 3D maze, there are two types of mazes which can be made. One is a map-based maze and one is a list-based maze. And what we're going to be making is called a map-based maze. And map mazes are usually much simpler, but they still do um, give a pretty good illusion. Um, and by illusion, I mean the real maze is going to be just a 2D maze, which you can see actually. But all the things are going to be, you know, kind of be projected up if you want to think about it that way. And that's going to look as if it's 3D. Anyway, I'm not going to explain it um, further because you will start to see uh, where I'm going with this when we start to use the Raycaster sprite. But now since we're just in our player, I think it's important we just get to the start of it. So when this, um, we're going to start this off when the green flag is clicked. And here I'm just going to enter into a simple forever loop. Now, each and every time a key is pressed, we're going to um, do something. So let's start with the up arrow key and you can head over to sensing and grab this block which says key pressed. Um, when the up arrow key is pressed, we just want to move 10 steps. And when the down arrow key is pressed, which is going to be the exact opposite thing, I'll just move back 10 steps. And this alone is going to make sure that, well, we do whatever. Uh, we basically move at the command of the arrow keys. Now that's fine, but there's still a lot more we need to do. And um, it is pretty useful if we use a variable instead of 10, although I don't really think we'll be changing it during the game. So what I will be doing here is I'll make a block and I will call the set variables. And um, I'm gonna set up all the variables right here within this block so that they are added at an instant. So I will call the block before the forever loop and within the set variables block, what I'm going to do is first delete the my variable variable. And here I will be creating a new variable called speed. Now you can click OK. Uh, it's OK if it's a global variable. And you can set the speed to be something. I'm going to set it to 10 as of now. I may want to change that later. And you can just put speed right here. Now when the down arrow key is pressed, we'll obviously want to do the opposite. So I will move by 0 minus speed steps. Now this is optional, but you can also use the uh, multiplied by operator here and say negative one times speed, and that would give you the same result. Now this obviously leads to no change and things work as usual. You can see the dot move around, um, but this is a little more concise. Now I'm gonna add in another um, if then, and this time it's going to be with respect to our left and right arrow keys. So. If key left arrow is pressed, then what I will do is turn clockwise by some factor. And once again, for that factor, I will be making a new variable. And this one is going to be called turn. And I think I'll set turn to five as of now. Once again, I may want to change that later, but I will set it to five. So I will turn um, anti-clockwise by um, turn degrees in case the left arrow key is pressed. And if the right arrow key is pressed, then what I will do is turn not clock, uh, not anti-clockwise, but clockwise by turn degrees. Very simple code and I'm just gonna put it right in the front. And what this is gonna enable the player to do is turn around and then move. So this is a pretty neat way of doing it. And um, this is much more intuitive when it comes to the actual 3D maze. As of now, if you're trying to control the dot, it's gonna be pretty hard to do it. Um, but if you have this, it's fine. 
So I'm going to create one more variable now, and this is going to be called last. And what this is going to do is it's going to um, store the last key that's been pressed. Now, you may not see the point of this right now, and this will come when we start with the collisions with the maze, and then we check if we have gone through the maze, and this is where this variable gets um, um, is really useful. But this last variable is just going to constantly store what the last key pressed was. Um, initially, I'll set it to null because I don't really want to have um, you know, anything stored in the variable. But if the left arrow key is pressed, then we will set last to be L. If the right arrow key is pressed, then we will set last to be R for right. Um, if the up arrow key is pressed, I'm going to set it to F for forward because it's not really up where the player is going, it's really forward. And lastly, if the key down arrow is pressed, I will set it to be B. And that stands for backward, which means that the player has moved back. All right, so that is going to be pretty much all you need to do with regard to the player. And now I'm going to upload my backgrounds. And um, this is probably not the best way to do it. I mean, uh, I'm, since I'm explaining, um, but I think it's pretty easy to do it this way. So I will go ahead and do it. Anyway, so we have these two backdrops loaded up and this one is going to be the main scene where the brown color is, uh, is the ground and the blue color is the sky. And this looks like, you know, some kind of um, land which is going and the sky is converging it with uh, converging eventually. So this is going to be our main terrain and that's going to be where the 3D maze is. Um, but the U win screen is going to be what the player goes to at the end. Okay, so now we're going to upload the maze and the maze is quite simple. It's one I drew on my own and I'm pretty sure that um, you could do the exact same thing and do make a better maze and use that for your code. There's only one thing that you need to be careful about and that is when I'm entering my coordinates, I'll do it um, making sure that the dot stays within the maze and in case you make it in such a way that the dot is outside the maze, then you'll start to face all kinds of bugs. So um, either use the same maze with my coordinates or you can use your own maze with a different set of coordinates uh, where the dot is inside the maze. So all right, so this is going to be our maze and the um, exit is going to be right here. Obviously, I don't have that exit sprite set up yet, but we'd have to go somewhere like this if you follow my mouse pointer and that is going to be the way we go to our exit. So that's kind of simple and that is what we'll be doing right now. And by that, I meant the fact that we'd want to set this up perfectly with regard to our coordinates. And I will also make sure that um, the dot does not go through the maze when it's traveling backwards. And the reason I'm just doing it backwards is because I'll set up a forward limitation later on. And it's just the backward that really matters, um, um, uh, that really matters when we're making sure that the player doesn't go out of the maze. So um, to fix that first, you can head over to the control section and grab an if then. So you can just say if um, touching, uh, if touching maze and the last um, key that we pressed was L. And the reason I just had um, the maze put in there was because I wanted to add another if, but I think this is going to be um, having the same outcome. So if touching maze and the last key pressed was um, uh, was backward, which means B. So if last was B, then what we will do is we will move speed steps. Basically, we're just moving in front so that the effect of the back key is, you know, nullified. And that is pretty much going to be it. And um, before I wind up with this video, I'll be broadcasting a message here. And this is going to be called find distance. And what this will do is go to our dot, which I haven't programmed yet, and I will do it in the next video. And it's going to tell us the distance to the walls or where there is no wall. And that would be the function of the dot, along with making sure, like I said, that the um, player doesn't go out of the maze and so he is limited. Um, and um, I'm going to um, set up the coordinates and the maze coordinate is going to be so when I receive, uh, I'm sorry, when the green flag is clicked, I will go to X4 and Y19. So this is going to be the coordinate I want to go to. And as far as the player's coordinate is concerned, I will move him to, I will say go to X and maybe I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it before the set variables. I will go to X negative 200 
and Y140. So it's right at the top of the screen. So when I do press the green flag, you can see that we are within the maze. I will also point in uh, direction 180 so that we are pointing downwards at the beginning of the maze. So when I press the green flag, you should have a perfectly, um, perfectly um, perpendicular square with regard to the maze. And that is going to be all I'm doing in this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.